Hello YouTubers, Toby Till here with Rocky Mountain Snow MX. We are here to provide you with all of your snow bike related technical videos and also any parts or accessories you may need for your snow bike. Feel free to give us a call. 720-263-7533. So as you can tell, I'm not on the snow doing my review. Uh, I've spent the last month uh, out with the Timber Sled product and the Yeti product both putting a ton of hours in on it. Um, so now it's time to reflect, spend some time helping you guys make a buying decision why snow check's going on. And that's where we're at. So enjoying a little tropical sunshine reviewing snow bikes. Hope you enjoy. We have spent the last month on the snow with the 2022 Yeti product. And as all of you know, uh, we are now a timber sled dealer again. Uh, we were originally a timber sled dealer from 2012 to 2017. Uh, and now once again, uh, we are a timber sled dealer along with a Yeti dealer. So that's going to give you um, a really unbiased uh, opinion and writing testimonials from myself, from other writers uh, that really have nothing to gain by being biased towards either product. We just really want you to have the right system to ride. Um, over the years, we paid a lot of attention to the different systems, um, including when Aero 3 came out last year uh, and really uh, came up and brought its A game. Uh, even though the Yeti was a little lighter, uh, the Aero 3 would definitely tractor through and able to cut some lines that the Yeti couldn't. Uh, now that Yeti has a new track and a new system, um, they're really giving the Aero 3 a run for their money. Uh, and the Aero 3 and Riot 3 now are bringing their absolute A game. So this is gonna be just a little bit of a review to help you decipher what system you would like to buy from us here at Rocky Mountain Snow MX. Uh, whether it be the new Timber Sled product or the new Yeti product. Thanks for tuning in. All right, so we just got back from the Island Park in Idaho, the frozen cow tag ride. Uh, where I got to ride the brand new 2022 Yeti kit and the Timber Sled Riot Pro 3 inch kit. Uh, so let's start with the Yeti. I think they moved the ski back towards the motor with the new spindle setup. So it's come back a little bit further. Turns really nice. Has the new 2.6 track. Uh, the side lugs are being shaved off, kind of angled, uh, I guess. So it feels real moto-like through the trees. You can pop wheelies over logs and uh, humps and stuff like that. It really pulls the front end up nice. That kit, the 129 free ride, was on a brand new Honda. Uh, so that was a really nice setup for sure. Um, the timber sled was on a brand new Husky 450. And the Riot 3-inch track uh was really nice too that that pulled up really quick got up on top of the snow um obviously with a three inch track it pretty much was digging down everywhere which was nice um feels probably a little more planted stable as compared to the yeti yeti's definitely more moto -y feeling uh on the roads for sure the yeti i think is better it's really wash the back around and the skis not dragging you all over the place but that being said the timber sled setup is really nice too it feels really planted in the snow um, and yeah that three inches that's going to be hard to beat that three inch track I think that's going to be a great setup that was also a 129 uh, so yeah it's really personal preference they're both good, I like both of them, so if you can have both, have both. Uh, 
So yeah, they're both really good setups in 2022. Um, they just keep getting better and better. Yeti's obviously lighter, uh, which you can feel with the belt drive. It spools up quicker and um, gets lunging forward pretty nicely. Timber sled's probably not as quick like that, but once it gets up on top, it climbs up on top of the snow with that three inch paddle, so it's a really good setup too. So yeah, go out and get one. Hi Toby. Okay, so this next set of reviews uh, comes from a day that I set up when we got back from Island Park. Uh, we had the My Little Pony, had a 2021 Husky 501 with a 2021 Yeti 137, but it has the 2022 Yeti track on it in the 137. Uh, had the Timber Sled Riot S Pro on a Cowie. Had the Timber Sled Aero 3 Pro on the Yamaha. And then of course, all of my customers uh, with their existing bikes, um, we had another Aero 3 2021 on a Works Edition Honda. So that matched up with My Little Pony. Uh, really, really good showing off the Aero 3 in the deep powder performance. Um, then we had 2019 Honda with a 129SS. We had a 2009 Honda with a 129SS. Um, lots of variety in bikes, lots of variety in kits. We had a Sherco 500 with a 2021 Yeti 129 Freeride. Um, yeah, so we had lots of things that day. Uh, these guys are gonna talk about their experiences on those kits and let you know what they thought of the rides throughout this day. All right, uh, yeah, my name's Walker. I've been snow biking for about four years, snowmobiling for five or six. Uh, snow bike's definitely been waiting for me. Um, how about you guys? I'm Price. I've uh, snowmobiled built my whole life and just started snow biking. This is only my second ride, but um, it's very nimble in the trees and go about anywhere you want to go. Preston? My name's Preston, and I've been snow biking now for three years. Also, snow built my whole life, and uh, yeah, two different kind of experiences for sure. Uh, different lines, places you can't never get, you never go on a snowboard, but you can definitely go on a snow bike, so it's uh, definitely something that I enjoy a lot. So, so let's start at the top. Uh, give me your favorite bike of the day. If you only could have one, if you could only ride one, if you could only own one, which bike was it? Still the Yeti 129. Uh, I think that's the best all around bike. Uh, rode the long track for a while today. I really do like the long track for its specific things, but it's just a little too long for someone my size. The 129 is just perfect in between her. You got traction, still nimble, it's fun. Uh, the new 129 with the new track, it's pretty awesome. Uh, I do. It was on a Works Edition, so I can't complain there. That Honda Works Edition is an amazing bike. Tons of power. Um, that's probably my favorite out of the, all of them for the day. Okay. I nice. noticed the Yeti too. Just felt a little bit more nimble, mm -hmm. like going through the tree, just really smooth, um, kind of effortless for me. And I don't know. It seemed to take me wherever it wanted to go too. So 137 or 129? Uh, I'd probably do the 129 also. 137 though, it was a beast. You really don't feel the extra length, but um, I'd probably do the 129 also. Mm -hmm. Preston? To say the little pony again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, rode the same bike with three inch. And still, after all these years, I'd have to say I'm still a Yeti fan. Um, just like the nimbleness of it, uh, the lightweight feeling of the, of the bike. So, had my, my vote. Uh, second would probably be the Yeti 137 with the Husky. I like that. And then probably by the Arrow 3. Third. Okay, and the Arrow 3 was on the Works Edition me, also. The right 3. The right oh, the right 3. The right 3. Right 3. Okay. Right three. Got it. On the Cowie. Yep. Yep. Okay, cool. 
Uh, Matt, give us the rest of the guys that just join us. Cause just a little introduction, you know who you are, um, how long you've been riding snow bikes for, and then let's go right into favorite bike of the day. If you only have one bike, if you could only have one track kit, which one would it have been? So I'm Matt from Bale Extreme Rentals. Come down and check them all out. We have Yetis, Timber Sleds, long track, short tracks, three inch, just about everything that we have out here in this configuration we have. Um, I've been riding them since I can't remember. It was the first, uh, what was the first kit out there? It was way before even Timber Sled was out here and they were impossible to ride. You couldn't go down the road over 40 miles an hour before the bars would crisscross and flip over the bars. <laughs> two that moto was, days, baby, with yeah, the eight yeah. inch desk ski. That's what it was, it was a two moto. It yeah. was in the early 90s. So in 18, we really got back into it. That's when the 16, in my opinion, is when everything changed and you could start riding again. As far as the bikes today, man, they're all fantastic. I was amazed at how much I like the long track. I'm not a long track guy at all. <laughs> Never have been, can never see myself being one. But I was real comfortable on it. It's real lightweight, and I really, really like it. Um, and now you're talking about the Yeti 137 the with the 2022. Yep. Yeah, okay. exactly. Uh, I was really impressed with it. That wouldn't be my only bike if that was the only bike I could have out of the group that's sitting right here today. I would probably say it would have to be the Yeti. Uh, your Yeti with the works edition on it would be the one that I would choose if it was the only bike I could choose. I like the lightweight out of it. It just feels really lightweight when you ride it. It shifts way, way better than a timber sled. That belt drive is just so much more efficient. It's so much smoother. I feel like it transfers a lot easier. The ski's way more forgiving. It's just an overall, I feel, an easier bike to ride. I do love the three inch arrow with the works under it. Uh, it's, I feel like it's a more aggressive, if you want to use that word. In sugar snow, it does definitely get a little better traction. And I've had the rights and stuff like that, um, but those would be my top two. Sweet. Yeah. All right, who wants to step up next? Dave, Pete. All right. Tell us about yourself. Dave Hill from Vail, Colorado. Uh, big time skier back for all these years and a little bit of snowmobiling. I got into the snow bikes in 18, bought a Yeti, uh, so four years. Today was fun, it was good conditions and it was a lot of good bikes to try. I, I definitely like the power of the works bike, uh, but I was also impressed with the, the Yamaha, the, the way it revved and uh, track wise, I, I, I didn't like the way that timber sled steered, but I was used to my Yeti, so I was just trying to get used to that. But I think, uh, and I did get on the long track, I liked it. I didn't have enough time on it to really like it. It just felt like a Cadillac, like you could push through and do lots of stuff. If I could have one bike, it would probably be the, the new works with the 129 Yeti kit, but good time. Cocoon, Pete. Pete Cog, Vail, Colorado. Pretty good days. Our background's pretty similar. We skied a lot. Kind of. I did not snowmobile. I went right to the snow bikes back in '18. Got that first one. I think I'm the only one here that actually that's still got the original. <laughs> Maybe the skinny mm -hmm. 129, <clears throat> which is my baby. I love it. Um, I didn't ride that husky the long track in the woods. And I'm thinking maybe subconsciously, I just didn't want to, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you one thing, it's a Cadillac, it's smooth and grunty. I, that thing is like, definitely makes mine feel like it's got wooden wheels on it, kind yeah. of. But um, and I think I didn't ride the works bike with the Yeti on it, because the works bike I rode had what on it? Uh, Aero 3, Aero 3 Road Max, yeah. Yeah, yeah so. I've ridden the arrows before. Um, I, I prefer the Yeti track. I think if I could throw down today and just go buy something fresh, that works Honda is so snappy. It's so much fun to ride. It feels great. Um, I would, I would, I would love to have that bike on my skinny track. But yeah, the new ones, uh, I've ridden the Yeti 12 inch, obviously um, most of my buddies have that particular setup. And I think I would probably go with a Yeti, the ski, I like the ski way nicer, but that Honda sure does feel good. 
Okay, so I want everybody to talk about the hill. So we're, we're back at the trailer and we rode a bunch of trees today and, and got off in the trees quite a bit. And um, obviously that's where a lot of this is coming from is the tree riding that we did. Let's talk about the hill and hill climbing on snow bikes and um, why, why nobody in this group actually chose the Arrow 3 that out climbed everybody on the hill. gonna step up and explain that one. <laughs> I like the Arrow 3. I think it's a great kit. It just, it's uh, like Matt was saying, it's it's aggressive feeling. It, it forces you to just ride it really hard. It takes a lot of effort. Uh, going down the trail or anything other than powder, even just harder packed snow is just really, really hard. But it did, out, out on the hill when we were doing the drag races, it outpulled everything. It was carrying the ski all the way to the top. And uh, I mean, that thing was awesome. But then again, that long track, I think, just damn near outpulled it too. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I like the Aero 3. It's just not really a great all around bike for yeah, me. I you think said it's one, only That's five. right. Yeah. That's why I'm going down this road now. Yeah. You know, now I want to know, you know, what does a hill climber want? What does a tree rider want? Yeah. You know, let's talk a little bit about those two situations because that's different snow biking. Yep. yep. If someone's going to ride deep and steep, you want the three inch paddle. If that's all you care about, and you don't care about tight trees and just fishing around and more jumping and stuff like that, you, the, nothing beats that three inch paddle. It moves <clears throat> volumes of snow that nothing on the market is out there doing. And that's even, it may be a little harder, more aggressive, and you're a little more tired at the end of the day, but. That's, that's the best one for deep and steep, that's for sure. Anybody else want to talk about hill climbing and deep tracks and what you experienced? Okay, let's go. I like, I like the long track. I, would, I still, I think I would pick the long track with the 501. That thing pulled up the hill great. And me, I'm 150 pounds, small guy. Like, that thing just hauled ass with me. I, I actually really enjoyed riding that up the hill. And for me, if I was just a hill climber, I'd probably add that, honestly. Huh? Hey guys, Trevin here. I'm a timber sled ambassador. I've been riding for about five years, primarily on timber sled kits. Definitely a little more familiar with the timber sled kits, but I have spent some time on the Yetis. Toby has asked me to do a little comparison on my experience on the new Yeti 129 free ride, and then also my experience on the timber sled kits as well. So, First off, I'd like to talk about the timber sled kits and why I really like the way they ride and the characteristics of their behavior and what draws me to this product versus a Yeti kit. Because I am a, a timber sled fan, obviously. I'm an ambassador with them. I've really been a, a big fan of their products and of the company, and I stand behind it for sure. So with the timber sled kits, there's a few things I really like about the way they ride, the way they feel. Uh, the timber sled ski for one is quite different than the yeti ski it is a straight radius or straight side angle on it so it doesn't have a curve like the yeti ski for me this is a much more stable and planted ski meaning that it wants to track straight you have to deliberately turn the ski if you want to turn that makes it really predictable really stable and something I prefer in my riding. Yeti ski, it is almost less stable. Like I feel like I have to make an effort to keep it straight, keep it going straight. It wants to naturally turn on its own. So on hard pack snow, sometimes if it really grabs, it'll dart, it'll do things that I'm not as big a fan of. When I carve, when I edge on this ski, it really holds really well and it's predictable. I can lay that bike over, drag handlebar and feel confident that the bike is gonna do what I want it to do consistently. So I have more trust, more, more uh, faith in this ski and it doing what I want it to do. 
the trio options. So timber sled really has a lot of accessory options, a lot of easy options to get your bike set up the way you want it to without doing a whole lot of internal extra work to the forks. So this bolt on system allows you to really stiffen the forks and get the performance I'm looking for out in the snow with a progressive air spring system. So it rides high in the travel. It keeps the front end up and high in that angle of the bike the way I'd like to have it maintained and without the diving scenario. So for people who like to jump, people who like to drop, the trio setup in combo with the ski, a lot of flotation, it really helps maintain the attitude of the bike under those maneuvers, along with hard carving, hard cornering as well. Other things, when we get into the Riot 3, this is a new kit. It's the one that a lot of people are looking at. We have a lot of options in kits with Timber Sled. Some with lower price points, you're wanting a cheaper setup. You can get some good options with Timber Sled that can get you into the game. When we get into the new kit for this year, what I'm gonna be snow checking for this season is gonna be the Riot 3. I'm going after the standard height kit versus the, the S models. The S models have their virtues as well. Um, maybe going after two kits this year and trying both, but the standard height kit is kind of where I'm leaning for this year. The three inch paddle on these kits is an industry first and an exclusive for Timber Sled. For our conditions here in, in Colorado, where we have a real bottomless uh, snowpack where you're often trenching and you're just really not biting into some the firm snow underneath but there really isn't any compared to like Idaho and Washington some of these other states I've ridden in the three inch paddle really assists us in getting that drive and that flotation and getting the machine up out of the snow and on top of the snow uh, so that's a, an exclusive for timber sled something I am a big fan of it doesn't necessarily carry the highest speed down the trail or on firm surfaces, but it does really well in our typical conditions where it's soft, it's bottomless, and most of the time in the mountains, we're first to third gear and we're not really going beyond that unless you're on a road or a transfer to get to that next powder hole that we're looking for out there. So, the Riot kits, really versatile. The new shock packages on these offer a lot of adjustability with a three clicker system. It is a, a fluted design with a bypass this year. So it's like a two stage system where if you bottom out or really hit a hard impact, it bumps into another stage of damping that really manages those hard hits well. So we've got more travel on the timber sled kit and that offers really good performance. I call it kind of like the monster truck or trophy truck style suspension versus the Yeti which is a little less travel but you get a little more precision with the Yeti I would say because of the shorter travel um, they don't ride maybe as high and they're a little flatter riding in terms of the angle of the kit but the S model is very similar in terms of that so if you want that option so versatility the, the dealership support that you get out of timber sled is far superior in my opinion because there's a lot more dealers with them they're backed by polaris you've got a big company behind them a lot more people are familiar with them you're going to find parts more readily they're going to be in stock they usually have a good inventory with timber sled and they try to make sure that spare parts things like that are there timber sled tough is a slogan and yeah these kits are very durable uh, they definitely lead the industry in that regard so you can have a lot of faith a lot of trust that this kit's going to get you out of the back country especially if you're doing the normal maintenance and, and on schedule and everything like that. So for me, the Yeti kits, yes, they're a little lighter. The carbon tunnel and some of the titanium bling is cool. I've spent time on them. They haven't earned my trust in terms of durability and reliability out there. Timber Sled has. I like to jump, I like to drop. I like my bikes to ride like a moto in the dirt as much as possible. And the Timber Sled kits really offer that that characteristic, that ride option with the versatility of shock clickers and other things to make sure that it is uh, as versatile as possible. And if you need that stability, that ski down, consistent pressure, it's there, but you also have the ability to put it into a riot mode where you're wheeling and making it really playful. So I hope that helps you guys make decisions out, out there for snow check 2022. Um, a lot of good products, the industry keeps growing and the equipment keeps advancing, so it's an exciting time to get into the sport. Hope to see you on the snow.
about him yeah I mean I was just saying how I start the long track is starting to grow on me it's uh it's definitely heavier and longer but it's a tractor it literally goes anywhere it pulls you out of anything that you think you're not going to get out of but is it a yeah. tractor in a bad way or a tractor in a good way I think it's a tractor in a good way you just have to like you have to accept the fact that you're on a tractor it's a little bit heavier bike you can't wrap it out you have to understand that, but then when you do and you're just like putting, like downhill, you actually hit the brake, it stops. <laughs> the Cadillac. Brakes, yeah, the brakes don't work on the short tracks, they just slide with the snow. Just the track slide. Yeah, yeah. That, that thing actually like hooks up and it's kind of fun. Yeah? It'll be. I don't know. I like, I I do like these. I'm ready to get back on uh, one of these works editions. Uh, the three inch is fun. I know the three inch. I want to play more on the Yeti. Um, this one, I mean, this thing's awesome. This is a great all-around kit, I feel like. It's not- oh, it's, Since they can't see it, let's tell. Okay. So it's the Works Edition with the 2021 Aero 3. Yep. 129. And so, and yeah, the 129 length, I think, is probably the best snow bike length out there. More, more so than the long track and 120. It just does everything. Uh, three inch paddles make it go everywhere. Not the best on the trail, but who rides right. the trail? Like, why, the why, why are we riding the trail? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what I found is, you know, I like the three inch a lot. When you, when the Arrow Three, when you drop the clutch on it and you go to take off from a stop, it doesn't trench in. I mean, it literally just takes off in a straight line and is immediately up on top of the snow and you go. Uh, I really feel that the three inch moves a lot of this really heavy, deep snow. Um, moves lots of volume. Super well. Um, when it's in the trees and you know you're working it downhill, uh, man, it, it's smooth. It works downhill really good. It doesn't have the aggressive pop. So like when you're coming downhill and you and you come up to let's say a down tree and you want an instant pop over the tree, I don't feel that it spools as fast as the Yeti bike. I it's think it's heavier. It's yeah, the weight. It's yeah. The, I feel it's the weight. Is yeah. that it's probably the weight? Maybe it's, the weight of the trap. It's, it's yeah, it's not like a Yeti. A Yeti is playful and feels light right when you get on it the yeti definitely in my mind the first thing i feel is like holy cow this thing's light and it wants it to go wherever you want it yeah. want it to go and that's why i think and that track speed too is what I was gonna say, track speed is a big thing i feel like it takes a second to like get through the gears yeah where like on the yetis you're, you're, you're like there rah, da, yeah, da, you're definitely you're banging that's through why the, gears. the yamahas do great with yetis because they rev so yep. high and yep. fast but yeah, we'll and, be putting the works under the Yeti soon. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, what I feel going back uphill, right? So we worked the downhill sections. I think the Yeti probably had something over the Arrow 3 and the downhills for sure. Because just the responsiveness and the way that I could, you yeah. know, just pop it through the trees and, and really just be clutch dropping and track speed being right there. Yeah. Then coming back uphill, I found myself having to take some shallower lines. You know, I, I couldn't yeah. just take the trench. biggest point you can't just trench with yeah. this like you would with this or with the three inch yeah uh, and we're only talking the works edition spikes we're yeah. not talking about the yeah. 501 yeah. with the yeah. 137 <laughs> but, but the, you know the works edition bikes i think coming back uphill you know i i had to i had to make the yeti work uphill a little bit more instead of just a point and shoot it, it feels like the tracks is spinning and not it much. does I think in this snow, it's it's a it's a yeah. it's a softer paddle track, and, it's, and that in this heavy over. stuff, I think it's bending over and not getting doing. as much traction as the Arrow Three. That's what it's doing. It may be a whole different story and super light, fluffy snow. That's we'll I think the that. stiff lugs in this snow helps. Like yeah. the Yeti, those lugs they do fold, and this snow it's slick, it's slippery, it yeah. turns to ice as soon as it. Yeah, passes. I mean it's it's. You know? I mean yeah. this is this is not Colorado snow. It's slush. <laughs> it's snowball yeah. snow. Yeah. <laughs> 
But I mean, that's where you know the three inch shines. I still like the weight difference, like you said. And for me, my some of my size, the weight difference is a huge thing. And just that belt, the no friction oh, with it. You could you could hear and feel it yeah. every time you go for a high RPM shift compared yeah. to the timber sled yeah. and the Yeti. The Yeti's just like flawless. You don't hear that big. Clunk. I hate I hate the dump in the clutch. Oh, dude, like it on the, so on the bad. chain case, it's like Kunk. and you can just if it's making that kind of noise, you're you're losing power. You're working. It. Yeah, <laughs> you're losing power. Kirk. You got a ten mil handy. That's, uh, I just realized you know, it's dirt bike yeah, yeah. season. My tool bags and my dirt bike is backpacking not in here. So what do you guys think? Give us some input. I just really like the works. I mean, I I, I was just really getting used to having that extra power and just gets you out of some tight situations and i was riding the the timber sled track and it tracked nice through i would like and i've been snowmobiling most of the winter so i came off just going uh oh i shouldn't be here <laughs> and it's like oh yeah i got it no big deal but what a what an afternoon yeah yeah it is forgiving so i think you need to probably go back to the yeti works and see you get some time on it yep yeah because I stole it from you, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I love the back and forth though. That's the coolest thing. I've never ridden the the, the timber sled track, and, and that, it is cool to have still, two and it rips. Bikes. There's nothing bad about it. Like yeah. you guys all said, it's like they both have their little points here or there. So I think it really, to me, I think a lot of it comes down to rider. You know, are you a super aggressive rider, and do you like that instant pop? And that instant snap that the Yeti spools up and brings track speed with, or do you like something that's just a little bit more ag not aggressive? What's the word I'm looking for? A little bit tractor. tractor. A little bit more tractor. I feel like it's more, it's more like, like aggressive. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got more, like more, more of a fight. The aero ski, and that's why I didn't. I put the air, Yeti ski back or the aero ski back on it. Yeah. I've been running the works with the aero on, or the Yeti on the front. <sighs> okay. And it takes away a lot of that aggressive feeling, that dartiness that the aero. That's just the nature of the aero ski, yep. is that darty, grabby feeling. Yeah. And in general, I like the Yeti better, but I knew we were going Yeti against aero, and I put it back on. And <laughs> it Yeti's definitely rides steer. better with a, year, a Yeti ski on. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. <laughs> the the handling of the Yeti ski yeah, is, is probably the best. I'll probably never go back to another ski. I, yeah. I like the Yeti ski. It's just smooth. It's easy. Like I said, I'm a small guy. Like I want something that's like easy for me to manhandle around, and the, the timber saw definitely takes a little more. Yeah, <clears throat> definitely. Have you noticed any difference in the front end on these two bikes with that new spindle being raked? I couldn't tell. The I can't there. really tell. Yeah. I think I want to get like more on the hard pack yeah. where I can feel it. Like we've been. Not doing much I don't notice anything different in this snow. Yeah, in this snow. But on the trail, maybe, maybe down the trail. Yeah. And coming through the whoops at speed. Yeah, it's it's it, fun. It does. I was worried about it feeling like heavier. Cause now it's not carbon yeah i don't feel that it's any heavier i i really don't feel much of a difference at all i think dave thinks it might nose plant a little bit easier my little pony fucking kicked my butt gave <laughs> <laughs> me a fucking bronco they all feel a little bit different on the flats but if you ask me it's when you're riding in the deep woods i want my snow bike to be the best when you're in the tight shitty stuff because you're making your one you're like oh shit i gotta go there it's the snap decision and if it's not snappy it's just that tiny hesitation that will bog you because half the time you're making a decision between me and you you're like i can't go there but i gotta go there and if it doesn't snap like there and you're out right you're point, riding the lightest quickest most responsive yeah. bike out there that's well, why you like little, that SS so much. I got yeah. that little skinny sack on it. I know. That's and that's what I'm saying. That's the so, one thing I notice when I get in the tight spots with the other track. They they're not nearly as snappy. No. You can't feather the clutch. Ah, 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 and go. Yeah. yeah. They're kind of like oh oh oh. Yeah. E even and even that new one. Do you feel too. that way about? I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. do too. It's yeah. not it big. It's not, it is. It's not. You have to carry a lot more track speed. Yeah. With that well, track can, this than a, any of these. You yeah. you can clutch this track. And yeah, get but it to that's why you can keep it up on the clutch. Yeah. Yeah. And if you can get the belt spinning. It's called a chainsaw. You have a lot more maneuverability. You do. It's when it's oh 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 and pushing. That's when it pushes you into shit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like in the deep woods, you're like, oh shit, where am I gonna go? Here, there. You're, you're like, ah, it's like a dirt bike at that point. And I think the little track, you know, the Yeti track definitely spins quicker that way. Does yeah. Yeti still produce the SS? No, they don't nope. make that one, no. no more it, SS. Now, in here, in here right now, trying to climb back up out of this hill in that soft stuff, 
Yeah, you reckon it, you're working it. I mean, I got to kind of look for other lines. I got to go left and right a little bit, yeah. you know, because it doesn't it doesn't propel you forward, you know. It's so funny how every dog has its day, you know. Yep. That yep. track is marvelous on some days. Yep. And some days this track is awesome. And yeah. you know, if you could have one of every one, we'd have one of every yeah, one and yeah. just pick it out for that day. So I, I'm so glad, like the intermediate sizing, the 129 is now becoming a thing. You know, Timber Sled's done it, and yeah. everyone's doing it. I, I think the 129 is the way to go. I, w I wish they would do a Riot 120 for us. Oh, inch, with yeah. the three-inch battles yeah. on a 120. That'd be kind of cool. I wish. I, I'm looking forward to riding the 120 Could, Yeti with that track. But the Yeti, oh, yeah. can you get a 120 Yeti with a three-inch paddle on it? No. no. Two, it'll be that 2.6. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. I do like and the it'll new be track. wide. It'll Four be wide. Yeah. So it'll be the closest thing to yours. That yeah, you it really have. will. Mm -hmm. It'll be the closest. It'll yeah. have the same oh, footprint as yours. So, same rail width. Right. Than what you have. So it lets, the track, track. It lets, lets the track bend up on the side. Yeah, yeah it's still five and, and a half inch space. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about the trees now. Um, what what's your standout in the trees? If you were building a bike just for the trees, you didn't care about hill climbing, nothing else, no trail riding. What's the trees are? What's the the pick of the kits? I'd have to say Yeti 129, again, like with the overall bike. I think that's just the best in the trees, and that's what I really like. I like, you know, mobbing through the trees and side hilling, and the steeper it gets, the better. Boondocking, right? Yeah, boondocking. That's, that's what I'd rather do. I mean, yeah. Yeah. the road sucks. I mean, yeah. I'd buy a snowmobile if I want the hill climb. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I mean, <laughs> we're not, who are we kidding here? It's, yeah. not, it's, you know, you get up the hill, if you can get up the hill, it's not like blazing up on a turbo yeah. sled. I just see snow biking as boondocking and that Yeti kit, I think. The lightweight, it turns so nice. It does everything. It does everything, it does everything yeah. better. Yeah. Except just it, move volumes. Of exactly, stuff. yeah. It's easier, it's lighter, it I carries can, more track speed because of that belt has less friction. The new track is lighter, I can feel that. My only complaint about the new one is that paddle's a little soft. I can fit I can feel it bending on me and not, instead of getting that bite, I can feel it lighten up, which is my only issue with it was just a little soft, but if that's its only bad part, yeah, I can live with the Yeti for sure. It gets up on the snow a lot quicker than the Way better than our sure. wides do right it, now. It just, way it better. snaps up. Yes. Yeah. I like that. Definitely a huge improvement off of that. But I think I think a lot of that is just a I mean a pure weight thing. If you can get rid of twenty pounds yeah, exactly. on the tail on the and back another end, chain, and another chain and another chain of them, yeah, just twenty or thirty pounds. I mean, they've always said that the cheapest performance is getting rid of weight, right? Yeah. You gotta get rid of as much weight as possible and that's where that Yeti gets it. Yeah. yeah. Hands down. You can yeah. feel it the second you throw a leg over it. The second you start shifting through gears, I feel like the Yeti just picks up track speed so much quicker. Oh, yeah. Like I'm in third before you yeah. even think about it. You're like, rah, da, da. Yeah. then Timberside kind of takes a second to get there. Well, yeah. You know, you got that way bigger three inch belt. Yeah. And then you add two chains to that mix. Yep. That takes a little snap out of it for sure. I think, you know, it's a digger. It'll climb, but yeah. I don't know. Now, what about the interaction between the Riot 3? And the Arrow 3. Do we, do we kind of feel like the Riot 3's got some traction and got some nimbleness, but not quite where Yeti is? I mean, how close are they? I mean, if you're looking at these, how close are all these kits? They're all pretty close. Yeah, it's, they're all, yeah. I had a good time on every single bike. <laughs> yeah. They're all getting that's, so that's good. That's to start with. It's not we're, all pick, so close. we're picking little nimbles right now, you know? It's all I rider got, choice. The, the Riot 3, though... A million times better than the Riot 120 oh, yes. for the Thank kind you. of snow that we're trying to ride now. Like deeper stuff and trying to get around the trees. You have uh, been stuck all day long. Oh, it's, it was so day. frustrating all trying to ride that regular yeah. Riot. They're and with, horrible. Yeah. Worst kid I've ever ridden. Needs to so, have a three inch model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, probably for people that didn't really care for the Riot that they bought before, the 129 Riot is a hundred times better yeah. than yeah. the previous Riot. No doubt about it. Yeah. Million dollars better. Yeah. Cool. Um, anything else we want to talk about before we shut this down? Thanks, Toby.
Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that was sweet. Thank you guys. Awesome. We had a great day, and you know, I it it's neat to get this feedback. It's neat to get you know real writers' experiences on stuff. So I thank you guys for taking your time and being here with me today and giving me some feedback. Yeah. Sweet. Right Thanks, fellas. We had the opportunity uh, to get the 2022 Yeti, do some riding here in Colorado. We also had the opportunity to take that Yeti up to Island Park for the Climb Frozen Cow Tag. Uh, we got to meet up with Brock Bolin from Timber Sled, uh, spend an entire day with Brock and his 450 Husky with the 2022 Timber Sled Riot Aero 3 Pro. So we really have ridden quite a few of the new Timber Sled offerings, the Aero 3 Pro S, the Riot 3 Pro S, which are the shorter models, and then of course the Riot 3 Pro. And then we've also spent some time on the 129 Yeti Free Ride 2022 model pre-production. Uh, and then also we had the new 2022 Yeti track only in a 137 that we installed on a 2021 Yeti um, and got to ride it. So we've been spending a lot of time evaluating the new Yeti track, or evaluating the new Yeti system, evaluating the timber sled product and how it's going to fit into our business and what riders uh, are going to enjoy what system. Well, here's the long story short. The long story short is that I can talk for the next two hours on the features and benefits of each individual product. And I can have you see videos and testimonials of customers that have ridden them and all that good stuff. But what it really comes down to, it's the short and the sweet. A timber sled rider is absolutely going to enjoy his very first experience on a timber sled more than he will a Yeti. The Yeti feels completely different. The Yeti feels like you want to wash out on the front ski because you're used to riding further back on the seat on a timber sled. Or on a Yeti, when you go to stuff the front end and make it turn, you've got to be up on the tank. Then once you're up on the tank, it stuffs, it turns, it sticks like glue. Where a Yeti rider jumps on a timber sled and he feels the exact same thing. He feels like the front end's gonna wash out. He feels like the ski pressure is all wrong. It's all what you're used to because you actually ride the bikes in two different seating positions, Yeti to timber sled. So when I have a rider jump on, who is a timber sled rider for years and years, jump on a Yeti and in his first couple experiences as people actually ride these things, I'm like, yep. Just move your seating position forward to the tank. It's gonna be a whole different experience for you than what you're used to riding your timber sled out. Same thing with me. I am so used to riding the Yeti. When I jump on a timber sled, I don't understand how that front end works. I don't understand how the ski really is aggressive enough to hold because I've now changed my riding position from a timber sled riding position because I'm a Yeti rider. So. It's learning those idiosyncrasies of the timber sled ride and the timber sled ski versus the Yeti. I think they're both awesome. I think once you get used to riding them and you figure out where your seating position needs to be, both front ends are equally stuck like glue and they equally grab and hold where you want them to. But your very first impressions are much different. So there's a little bit on timber sled versus Yeti ski. They're very equal, but you have to ride them different ways. Let's talk about the meat and potatoes. When things come down to it, the Yeti and the timber sled, they're both going to give you this incredible, exhilarating ride. And I really just want to focus on the Riot 3 Pro because that is, in my opinion, the greatest kit to have in the timber sled lineup coming out in 2022. Uh, and I'm gonna focus on the 2022 Yeti 129 FR. So those two, the on a hill climb, straight up, you saw my Facebook Live videos, the Riot, I'm sorry, the three inch paddle aero track is going to definitely climb faster and harder than the new Yeti. 
The Yeti has track speed, but it doesn't have that sheer grip power that the three inch timber sled track has. But then in the trees, the Yeti is going to be a little bit more high speed and a little bit more aggressive where the three inch timber sled track is going to be more tractor like. So the timber sled is going to bite in, it's going to grab, it's going to propel you through the trees, but not with your hair on fire and branches sticking out of your helmet. So that's going to be the real difference in performance between the two is do you just want to point straight uphill and out climb everybody else in your group with the arrow th with the riot three inch timber sled track or do you want to establish a higher track speed and rip through the trees with your hair on fire so all of the riders that i took out the other day all of them and you'll see from the videos voted that the three inch timber sled track would out climb every other bike on the mountain for the most part uh, on the hill climbs all very very impressed but once they got into the trees where a lot of these riders spend their time the yeti really shined because the yeti established a higher track speed it was funner to rip super hard so if you're the kind of rider that spends all his days in handlebar width trees on super steep side hills just railing as hard as you can the yeti track speed is a little bit funner and more playful to have in those tree situations and more precise than the riot three was that we rode and i'm talking trees like this if you can't if you can see daylight between the branches and trees and you're going to hit that hole that's what these riders really preferred the yeti in was that super tight technical treed kind of side hilling stuff uh, and then of course when it comes out to the trail uh, the trail performance of the yeti is definitely a little bit lighter feeling and more precise and enjoyable on the trail and then the second real buying decision that you're going to make between the two systems is what they're made of so if you're the kind of rider that really feels that they want to be on an aluminum chassis over a carbon fiber chassis then the timber sled is definitely the way that you go if you're the kind of rider that says i don't mind a carbon fiber chassis at all i think that the light weight of the carbon fiber chassis has advantages to my riding style then you're going to buy a yeti so really at the end of the day the systems are so equal and they're such high performance systems one to the other. I can't pick a favorite for you. I can't tell you which one to buy, but what I can tell you is that at the end of the day, when it all comes down to it, it's a carbon fiber chassis or aluminum chassis. It is a high speed track speed kind of rider for a Yeti or more of a tractor kind of push through everything rider of a timber sled everything else all the differences between these systems and the way that they ride and the way that they perform come out to sharing very equal experiences they do them differently one the yeti is a high speed high maneuverability really hair on fire kind of ride where the timber sled is a little bit lower speed using more power more tractor like kind of ride so whichever one of those fits into your buying decision of I want to be on a timber sled or a Yeti, go with it because that's what you're going to enjoy when you get to the snow. But at the end of the day, man, they both get the job done so incredibly well that I'm going to be on both and I'm going to be super happy on both. Hello, YouTubers. Toby Till here with Rocky Mountain Snow MX. We are here to provide you with all of your snow bike related technical videos and also any parts or accessories you may need for your snow bike, feel free to give us a call. 720-263-7533.